Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. This time we're going to build a chain drive here, so let's go ahead and look at what parts we're going to need beyond the base platform that we already have built. We do want to look at one difference, and that is in what we're going to be using for the gear itself. Now these are actually called sprockets, and if you compare to a more traditional gear, you will see that the outer edge shows a visible difference. In the sprocket, the gaps between the teeth are much more rounded and wider, whereas in the traditional gear, those gaps are small in between each tooth. So that's important to understand. So I've got two different sized sprockets here, and those sprockets are designed to fit these, this chain, which looks just like a um, bike chain here. So if I take this chain and wrap it around, we can see that it fits that sprocket perfectly. So that's where we would use it. So I've got this, this chain here. For every sprocket, I'm going to need a drive shaft, and I've got two four-inch drive shafts here. I'm also going to need my spacers, or my three-hole spacers, some rivets to attach them. I need locking collars to lock down my um, axles on the platform, a handle. I'm also going to use two of these uh, thin spacers, and my 564th hex wrench. Now with regards to the spacers, something to consider here. If we look at the gear and the sprocket, you will see that this piece sticks up much larger, much higher, which means it actually sticks out more from here. But when we attach the chain to that sprocket, we can see that the chain is right up against the metal. So to reduce friction on the chain, I'm going to uh, use these spacers um, to help create more of a gap. So let's get started. Let's go ahead and take our sprocket and attach the locking collar. And I'm going to get that locking collar flush on the end. And we're going to do that for both sprockets. Now one of the nice things about a chain drive is where you position these is more dependent on where you want your input and output to be. They don't have to be directly touching. In fact, we don't want them directly touching because then we can't wrap a chain around it. So look, at this point, we can just kind of pick an arbitrary place to, to, to put that sprocket. So I'm actually going to place the first one up here. Now I am going up to my top row, which is different than I've done before. And the reason why is um, I'm using some larger sprockets here, so if I don't, I'm cutting really close to the bottom, and I, I kind of want to make sure the chain's not dragging as, or is dragging as little as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach this, and let's do that around. We'll get our rivets into place. Oh, kind of sliding around more than I want. And now you can kind of see why this is, can be a little trickier because I've got to fit into that little spot there. It's not impossible, but I try to avoid that top row when I can. And because these are going to be separated, I, I can place it wherever I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this next one way. Let's, let's go right about here. And rivet, rivet, flip this around. And rivet on that side. Oh, I don't, there we go. I didn't quite have it into position yet. Oh, and I pushed a little too soon. I pushed the rivet all the way through before I was ready. Okay, and it looks like my last one was separated a bit. So let's get that one into place. Okay, so I have my spacer set up. And now what I can do is just run my sprockets where they need to be. I almost forgot there. I want to put the spacer on the end and then run it through. And we'll attach our locking collar. Now, the locking collar is now going to be touching against the metal. So we can see that here. In fact, I can't get it all the way down. Okay, So that kind of creates a little bit of an issue. So what I'm just going to have to do is I'm going to have to adjust. I'm going to take this out a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually 
I'm going to put the locking collar on the inside, on the other side of this piece of metal. And that's going to help prevent this from sliding around. Um, and it, it avoids the need to worry about the piece here rubbing against the metal. So I can just put that locking collar there and it'll serve the same purpose because really all we want to do is prevent this from sliding in and out this way. So as long as I've got one on either side, that should, that should suffice. So spacer and then very carefully try to hold that into place and run through. Lock down that collar, and we're good to go. So now we can attach the chain. This chain is much longer than what I need. If you're thinking that when you grab the chain, you have to build this to match the length of chain, you would be mistaken because this chain is actually adjustable. If we look up close at the chain, all we would have to do is kind of wedge a nail right here and then twist and we can pop that chain and make it shorter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and position this on here and we see now I cannot connect. It's actually too short. It won't match up. So now I'm going to need a couple of chain links off of this one. So I'm just going to detach that. And I'm going to attach it onto this next one. Just going to position one side and twist that over. We don't want to be too forceful. Um, these, because they're plastic, will break easy if you're too forceful with these ends. I know because I've done it before by accident. So now, now, again, I'm too far, but here's the thing. I don't want to match this perfectly because if I do, this sprocket, the sprocket's going to kind of tilt away from the metal on one side. It adds too much tension to the sprocket, to the whole system, in fact, which reduces the longevity of the system and is going to increase the risk that it will break in some way. Or at least it'll break in a, in a real setting. So instead, what I tend to do is I tend to look for one chain link of overlap. And if we look carefully, we actually see I'm overlapping two. I'm going to very carefully take one off and set it aside. And then I'm going to put this back up and look again. And I see I've got one chain link of overlap. So I'm just going to go ahead and hook this in. Now, besides the longevity issue and the durability issue, having one overlap also is a lot easier to attach because you're not stressing to bring those two pieces together so much. So now, all I need to do is add a handle, and I have a working chain drive. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can see any of our other gear videos or any other tutorial that we post here at MythBadger Videos.